Hey, algebra students, let's take a look at how our formula skills in algebra can give us a head start into everything with slope and lines. Example says, find the slope of a line containing the points 10, 7, and 4, 15. Turns out on the GED formula sheet, there's actually three formulas that involve slope. Let's go take a look at them. So here is the GED formula sheet. And just an FYI, if you're taking the high set, you don't get the same sheet, okay? So you should be using yours. But if you scroll down to the bottom under algebra, the first three formulas here all have the word slope in them. So print out and mark up your formula sheet if you haven't already. Just kind of a cheat of how to use these three things. This one, I'm not gonna teach you to use it at all in this unit. It is a nice one to know, but everything you can do with it, you can do with the others. Okay, so you don't have to have it. But the first two both have slope in them and are used at different times. So important that you know when to use what. So first of all, slope weirdly is designated by the letter M in math. And you can see that both of these formulas have an M. So this one is M equals Y2 minus Y1 or the quantity of Y2 minus Y1 over the quantity of x2 minus x1. It's m with some x's and some y's. And remember what that subscript means. It means first and second. So I'm saying m is equal to the second y minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. So when do I use that? I use that when I have two x's and two y's. That's when I have points. So when I'm given two points and a point has an X value and a Y value, and then another X value and a Y value. So we'll just call that X1 and Y1, the first X and the first Y. And then we'll call that X2 and Y2, the second X and the second Y. And so mark on your sheet here, guys, you use this to find slope when given two points. Well, then how about the second one? So the second one is called the slope intercept form of an equation, y equals mx plus b. And it's not set up to find slope, like it doesn't say m equals. However, it has an m in it, so we could use it to find slope. But when would we use it to find slope? We would use it when we have the other things. We have an x, y, so we have one point, and we have a b, and b is another letter that's a little weird, it stands for y-intercept. You're like, why don't you use y? Because the y was already used in the point, you guys. So b is the y-intercept. And of course, like we said, m is slope. How we find slope of the formula is going to differ based on what we have. If we have two points, use the first formula. But if you have one point and a y-intercept, use the second formula. And what did we have? We had two points. So we want that first formula. All right, again, don't get intimidated by that subscript, the little numbers on the bottom. They just mean first and second. Now, you might say, well, which of these is my first and which of these is my second? It actually doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. But I'll just go ahead and say this is my first point. So this is x1, y1. And this is my second point. So this is x2, y2. And now I'll just go ahead and substitute into it. So I'm finding slope. So we will have M, which stands for slope. Some teachers say M stands for slope because slope is a movement, I've heard. I think the real reason is for the French word to climb, montar. I don't, I do not speak French, y'all. I should, I took a lot of French in school, but I actually speak Spanish because I fell in love with someone who spoke Spanish at one point. Turns out love was more motivating for me than school. Ouch. Well, anyway, now I can speak Spanish and I have a beautiful daughter because of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's true confessions today. Anyway, the point being, <laughs> M stands for slope. And then Y2 minus Y1. So I'm going to take my second Y value. So the Y value in the second point, 15. And I'm going to subtract from that the Y value in the first point, so 7. And that is going to be over the same thing with the X's. And so start with the same one. That's what I was talking about being consistent. So four is the second X. And from that, I'm going to subtract the first X, 10. 
And now you can just type this whole thing in your calculator if you'd like. I'll put up the fraction bar with the N over D, type 15 minus seven on the top, arrow down, four minus 10 on the bottom, press enter, and I see my slope is negative four thirds. Wasn't hard at all. I didn't even really need to understand that much about slope, which basically, guys, is just the steepness of a line. So in this case, if I'm saying negative four thirds is the slope of my line, I'm saying negative, so it's going down. And it's going down at a rate of four down for every three over. So it's a pretty steep downhill grade. That's, that's all that means. But anyway, you didn't need to know that. Hey, you could just like phase out right now. Think about sandwiches and butterflies while I'm talking. Because if you knew what formula to choose when you had two points to find the slope, eh, you're pretty good. All right, you guys. Strong work. Happy learning.